So this is how I made all of this in my web platform. <laughs> I've been working on the UI for my game lately because I wasn't totally satisfied with what I had before. Well, it's still far from perfect, but I think it's getting somewhere. That made me realize something. Well, in the past few years, I've done a lot of web development using popular platforms like React or sometimes Angular or even a little bit of Vue.js. But wait, don't get me wrong here. Godot has a pretty cool UI system already and I don't want to replace it. The thing is, I'm missing that little something that the web has. It's magic. <laughs> So what I mean is this is pretty cool to build your UI using a templating language like this. This is really descriptive and really fun to see the result on a screen. But to be fair, data binding is what I'm missing the most. This is something really common nowadays. Let me explain. Basically, it means that you're able to create variables and use them directly in your template. If you change the value, the UI will update. So right now, to create the same thing in Godot, it's not hard. You have to create the UI using the nodes and that's perfectly fine. And then in the code, you will create a variable. The thing is, if you update the value, you really need to make sure that you update the text on the screen as well. Well, it's not too bad, but what if it could be done automatically? I've seen some pretty cool projects online doing something similar, like this one, for example, with data binding and everything, but I think I have an idea. Dude, I got an idea. Obviously, we cannot use a web browser, we don't have one. Anyway, a web browser is too heavy, I don't want this in my game. Here is the idea instead. What if we could parse this syntax here and we create the nodes in Godot? I mean, it looks pretty similar to me, right? Right. The way I see it is something similar to React Native, where you create your template using the HTML syntax and it creates the corresponding control on the device. Okay, let's start simple. I created my parser and my template contains two buttons in the text edit. Look at this, something is on the screen already. We have buttons and the text edit as well, but this one is too small. The thing is, if we want to change the size, we're gonna need to have a vector to inside of the template. But hey, guess what? We are lucky, but we already have functions to compute that kind of expression here. I'm just just gonna add a symbol in front of the attribute so I know that I need to call that function. This way Godot should create us a vector too. Well, let's see the result then. Does it work? Of course it does. Awesome. Wow, I'm already starting to feel the... Magic. Okay, what about data binding now? Well, inspired by React here, I created a variable. To use it in the template, I'm gonna use the square brackets here, and voila, we can use a variable in the template. But does it work? Well, yes, we have our value displayed in our text field. Awesome. What about the buttons now? Well, the same way I created my binding, now I created something to handle the callback. It listens to the event pressed, and then it changed the value. Oh damn, I love this. And when you click, it just works. Everything is always up to date on the screen. This is really what is magical with data binding. Now that we have our dependency system and our binding system, it's pretty easy to go wild. For example, here I create a callback that computes the concatenation of a string with my value. And guess what? It's always up to date on the screen as well. Let's have a look. We have our text edit that displays the right value, but also our label that stays up to date with this exact same value. I guess that with all of this, we can start to create more complex interface. Like for example here, I even create resources that I reuse inside of my template. Those resources can even use the same expression and binding system I created. Of course, it's far from perfect, but I think it's a good start. Let's see this template in action. So now it's pretty easy to have something like a collection where you can add or remove items. It's even possible to have a much more complex collection. For example here, I have a collection of objects that contains certain several properties, why not? Or we could use our binding system to display the value of a text edit inside of a label, just like this. What if we bind the color of a color picker to our resource that displays the background? I don't know about you, but I think this is pretty awesome. I think that's it. I have no idea if this project will go forward or not, but I had a lot of fun doing this experiment. That's all I had to show for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and we're gonna see each other on the next one.